Yeah, and that's and that's the the interesting thing is how do you get the fish there? And and, and some people commented on just the interestingness of ospreys being such specialists and uh, and eating only fish. And do they eat only fish, for example? And how did they evolve to only eat fish? Do they have any evolutionary traits that seem to be adaptations for a life of fish eating? And um, so uh, I know that's a big barrage of questions about fishing, it, even down to vision. How do ospreys deal with refraction and light off the water and aiming through the surface? And so I thought maybe we could try and treat those all together and you could speak just a little bit about the the biology of them being fish eaters, if there's anything known about that evolutionary path that got them there, and whether there's anything um, relating them to their food supply. Do they, like, like in some other species where predators sort of control, in a way, the prey population? I'll go for that. <laughs> All right. Yeah, That's yeah. That's a great question. Um, yeah, those are really good questions. Well, ospreys are, are really interesting raptors. They certainly are probably the most specialized raptor or one of the most specialized raptors. And we like to say that you just add water and you've got ospreys. They're really interesting in that you find them on every single continent except the Antarctic. So they're, they're all over the world. Um, and you know why they're so specialized, that's a good question. I suspect uh, there was just a, a really good ecological niche that was available. There are other raptors that certainly do eat uh, fish, bald eagles will eat a lot of fish, um, but they have certainly gone down the road of um, extreme specialization as fish eaters. And um, why you you asked? <laughs> I do have happen to have some props here, and ospreys certainly do have some adaptations for this very specialized uh, fishing lifestyle, and. Let me go grab our skeleton osprey back here. So this was an osprey that, well, let me get it here. Um, this is an osprey skeleton. This, was, this one was electrocuted, um, unfortunately, but you can see how long its legs are. There's actually, when you take all the feathers off an osprey, there's not a lot to it, but you can see how long those legs are. And look at the fishing gear. They've got humongous, big talons, um, and they're able, and um, I'll show you some other adaptations. But one of the things that's very, very difficult for ospreys is if you think about it, when they go into the water, um, they might come out of the water. Well, let's say they latch onto a eight pound fish. Um, and they've got several pounds of water in their, in their feathers. So that might be 10 pounds they're trying to get off the water. Um, that's incredibly hard to do. The, the thrust that they need to generate to fly off the water with that much weight, maybe twice their body mass, uh, is phenomenal. And here's one adaptation. If you, our pectorals, our, our, um, our pecs, our breast muscles, um, on our chest, we don't have a keel like this. This is the breastbone of an osprey. And you can see this is the keel bone. So it's it's kind of like when you eat a chicken or a turkey, uh, they've got they've got this great big keel. But this is where one muscle, the, the pectoralis, the bird's pec, um, uh, attaches to this. Ospreys, it's pretty remarkable. A third or more of their body mass can be made up by one muscle, this one muscle that attaches here. And this is the muscle that generates this, uh, this movement, the, the flapping movement that gets them off the water. So they're very, very powerful flyers. Um, so they're really good at diving, hitting the water at 100 miles an hour. Um, um, and they're, here's a, the business end of an osprey. You can see those great big curved talons, which are wicked for going into fish, but also, They've got on the bottoms of their feet, if this focuses, the bottoms of their, their pads are like very, very rough sandpaper. So all this is special adaptations for grabbing onto fish and holding onto them. Um, their, their vision is exceptional. And here's an osprey skull. 
And so they, they've got good eyesight to the side, but they've also got eyeballs that look straight forward. Um, so they, they're very good at looking straight down. They've also got these bony, bo these round circular bones that protect the eyeball. You can see how big the eyeball is inside their skull. So all of this, all of this would be filled by eyeball. And they've got these sort of special bones to protect the eye. Um, so they do have, I'm sort of rambling here, but ospreys do have a lot of specializations for this um, specialized fishing lifestyle. It's a great question about refraction. And um, we suspect that most of how they become really good fishing birds is trial and error. Uh, the chicks have to learn it on their own. They're not taught by the adults. And, um, and that's one of the reasons we suspect that it takes them so long, um, you know, many years before they can become successful breeders. So here, Rob, come on back in the picture and, and uh, you can add anything you've got. <laughs> well, um, oh, that's go ahead, a great Rob. question about the, whether, do they just adjust for that refraction or can they somehow see things, um, are, are they anatomically able to correct for that? Uh, refraction. I, I don't know, but I, one thing is for sure, it must, I mean, and I think we're seeing that it takes a long time to become really proficient at catching fish. And uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why we see it takes so long for these birds. Uh, we, you know, of all of the 450 banded osprey over the years, I think I have to confirm, but we may have only had one or two this season that actually made it to nesting, and we we have never confirmed successful nesting. We made this year. So that's that's a you know with all those birds and all those bands, you would think we we would have seen this already. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And that's oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Just one more thing. Um, many people may know, but some of the the listeners may not know. Another general adaptation of of birds. Um, is has to do with the bone structure. So I'm holding here a, um, a, a beaver femur and a, a bird femur. And if I gave them to you, they're about the same size, about the same length. This one weighs about four or five times as much as this one. So mammals don't need, beavers don't need light bones. So if we were to cut this in half, it'd be pretty solid. But birds have hollow bones, and here's a cross section of an osprey bone, and um, it's a little hard to see. There we go. But this is like a soda straw. It's basically a very thin hollow bone. There are some struts, a uh, bony struts throughout it, but this uh, is an exceptionally light but strong bone. So these, um, this is one that's cut in half. Um, and here's a mammal bone, just for comparison. You can see it's got these great big thick walls. So um, an osprey skeleton, once you strip everything off, is surprisingly light. 